Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. April 8th, James Chalmers. Chalmers was known to be a stubborn man, a stubborn man on fire to be the first one to preach to a group of people who needed Jesus. So, Chalmers and his first wife, Anne, sailed to the Cook Islands northeast of New Zealand. Partway there, they were shipwrecked, stranded, and rescued by a pirate ship, and the pirate leader allowed Chalmers to preach the rest of the journey. For 10 years, James served in the Cook Islands, and then for another 24 years in New Guinea, he worked up and down the coast in 105 villages. He always preached Jesus. He always established a Polynesian teacher to carry on the ministry, and he always traveled unarmed to allay some of the natives' fear of him. When the government offered him a position, Chalmers said, Gospel and commerce, yes, but remember this, it must be the gospel first. The ramparts of heathenism can only be stormed by those who carry the cross. To understand what it meant for Chalmers to carry the cross in this time and this place, you need to know three things. Chalmers knew them. First, the natives had never heard of Christianity and were steeped in religion of their own. Second, a dubu is a public building for the native warriors, and it could only be used after it was consecrated by a human sacrifice. Wooden idols stood in the corner, and human skulls were piled near them. Third, the natives would never know Jesus if someone didn't tell them. And Jesus had said, as you're going, tell them. So, knowing all that, on this date in 1901, Chalmers headed for a remote village to which he had never visited. When Chalmers and his party arrived, the natives leapt with joy. They were delighted to welcome the group to the island. Shortly after, they invited Chalmers and his missionary partner into the Dubu for refreshments. They fell upon the men, dismembered them, and passed the limbs to the women, who cooked them with herbs. That was Easter Sunday, 1901. Chalmers knew what it meant to carry the cross. When we are secure in our future, we can be fearless in our present. When James Chalmers and his wife arrived in New Guinea, it was an unknown land full of terrors, savagery and human degradation and cannibalism. The sanctity of human life was unknown and every man seemed to be a thief and a liar. The men were most proud of their tattoos, but they were only entitled to have them when they had murdered someone. Chalmers intended to introduce the New Guinea cannibals to Christ. Chalmers' fearlessness must have been a great factor of success in his hazardous work. He disarmed men by boldly going amongst them completely unarmed. As his boat gently bobbed up and down outside another primitive village, they waded a short distance from the shore in their usual way, so the villagers had time to notice the strange vessel in the water and to take in the shock of seeing a white man for the very first time. In the hot New Guinea sun, suspicious savages with barbaric markings on their faces, sticks in their noses and human bones around their necks got into their canoes and paddled out to Chalmers' boat. Chalmers spoke peacefully and gave them gifts. Things like pieces of hoop iron and red braid. He let them know that he was leaving, but he would be back to tell them about a great being they did not know. He had a way about him that instantly disarmed people. A short time later, Chalmers did return to the village and this time brought his wife with him. They were greeted with a warm welcome. The villagers touched their noses and their bellies and then rubbed noses, as was their custom. Even the village chief invited them into his home. Human skulls decorated the room and blood-stained weapons lined the walls. And Mrs. Chalmers did her best not to let her angst show. Chalmers and his wife built their own hut in the village 
and began to teach the villagers about Christ. One afternoon, as they labored, a group of armed savages surrounded them and began to yell, tomahawks, knives, irons, and beads. The villagers said that if the missionaries didn't supply these things, they would be killed. The charmers told them, you can kill us, but never a thing will you get from us. He always refused to make terms with force. The missionaries spent a very anxious and restless night in their hut. But the next morning, the leader of the angry visitors returned, and this time in a very different manner. Apologetic about the previous night's escapades, he wanted to be their friend. Now that you are unarmed, Chalmers said, we can be friends. He invited the once hostile villager into his hut and offered him gifts and conversation. And he won not only his hut, but the hearts of cannibal groups throughout the land for Christ. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What frontier might God be calling you to pursue in spite of the fears that stand in your way? What steps can you take today to begin moving your life in obedience to God? When we are secure in our future, we can be fearless in our present. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.